Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio here on blogtalkradio.com front slash Gypsy Poet. I am the Gypsy Poet, and of course, is my wonderful, relentless, and mysterious wing gal girl, George. Yes, people say it with me. Girl George, and we've got a fabulous guest on the show this Sunday afternoon down in sunny San Antonio, Texas and over in Berkeley, California where the lovely girl George is hosting and we've got a great guest of the lovely, the wonderful and talented oh my goodness, the name is Larry Noble Sr. Can everybody hear me? Yes. I can hear you just fine. I'm in a better spot. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Uh, Now, I know Larry as uh, El Ray. Elroy, I, I okay. used to wonder why they called you Airway and then they called you Larry, and then when I seen it written out, it's Larry Ray Noble. So now I get mm-hmm. where the L comes from. I thought it was E yeah. L, like L, you know, Spanish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I've known Larry here since about 1996 at the Star Plow. Awesome. Yes. Yes. And you won the West Coast Blues Hall of Fame in. in yes. 2008 for the best blues guitarist of the year. How about that, Larry? That was real cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was that was real cool. Uh, uh, I'm not even a blues guitar player. I'm a frustrated jazz guitar player. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, I work with some blues folks, and uh, you know, hey, they they liked the way I was doing it, so uh, they you know they they recognized me, and um uh, and I, I I'm definitely honored, you know. Well, everyone yep. likes the way you play. You you, you bring a, a whole great energy into the room when you walk in. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right you go, to Doris. Birds of a huh? feather flock together. You know that. What? <laughs> so do you. You bring a great energy too. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, oh, they usually thank, do. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Yeah, she is oh, amazing. Oh, you're doing some kind of music therapy now. Tell me about that. Hmm. Um. Well, I, you know, I, I guess it's been about eight years. You know, my uh, my daughter was in a workshop, music workshop, and uh, the uh, the instructor said, "Well, I want you guys to go sing for some seniors." And um, you know, I gave a few of them rides, chaperoned and stuff, and uh, and I went. And um, they had a guitar just sitting down there, and my daughter, of course, said, hey, my dad plays the same. And said, well, could you play a song for the folks? And so that did it, and um, and I ended up, uh, you know, just playing at a bunch of facilities. And then about four years ago, I, my uncle had a massive stroke, and, um, you know, he, he's in a special care unit in Alameda, California, and I went to go see him. Well, my aunt said, "Go see him." He, you know, he wouldn't wouldn't even blink, you know. And uh, and he used to come hear me play a lot. And so I said, "Well, I'm gonna bring my guitar in here and just play some music." And I got to playing some music, some down home blues. And my uncle responded. And uh, and then the guy next door to him, you know, was in the bed next to him, responded. And so now I'm on staff at Alameda um, Hospital. I, I work with the stroke. <laughs> And uh, so, as you know, music music is a medicine. Um, yes, it it's a is. Powerful, powerful medicine, and so I'm 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 so thankful for the gift, and uh, I have a responsibility to share it. I played for my great aunt once when uh, she was oh god, she was probably 80 or so. This is many years ago in in an old age home. She didn't even know who I was. She came up and thanked me for coming and playing for her, but she didn't know who I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. Yeah. That's, that's so tell me, Larry, a little bit about your influences, please. Um, My influences? Mm-hmm. Well, from a very early age, you know, my dad would play music all the time around the house. He'd play a lot of soul music, mostly blues, B.B. King and, that's you know, uh, Albert King, all of that stuff. And as a little kid, I found it very repulsive and irritating. But as I got older and lived a little bit, had children and life experiences, I, I I understand the blues. I related to the Book of Lamentations in the Bible. <laughs> That's all Lamentations is, is the blues. And so uh, uh, I've been able to embrace that. I've been able to um, – um, it, it, it has helped me um, mm-hmm. get through various challenges in my life. And, um, yeah, 
You know? How old were you when and, you started playing guitar? Yes. Um, I think I was about eight years old. Um, you know, at that time, but at that age, everybody wanted to be a drummer. You know, Ringo Starr was the guy, and you know, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, I thought I was going to get a drum set for Christmas, and and I'm a guitarist because my mother bought me a guitar instead of a drum set. It's her fault. <laughs> When did you start singing? Did you start singing in the church like everyone else? Um, actually, uh, I started singing in elementary school. I think the first song I sung was Inchworm with the choir and stuff. It was a mass <laughs> choir. And uh, uh, for a long time, you know, I, I, I didn't sing. I didn't really, really get into singing until around eighth or around ninth grade. I was uh, uh walking down the hall in junior high school and me and a good buddy of mine, we were singing uh, Bill Withers' Lean On Me. We were singing it in harmony. And uh, the oh, teacher was like, oh, you guys need to get in my choir class. He did and I did. And um, from there, you know, I, I, you know, I discovered that, you know, I had a pretty decent singing voice. And um, I, you know, they entered me in a uh, – competition uh at the time you know marcus foster was just assassinated and um uh, uh they created a, a music scholarship that they had and so i basically uh was, competed against all of the uh you know junior high schools in um um in, in the bay area you know for that scholarship and uh that, that year i won it <laughs> and so great uh, uh in the, so you went to college yeah, that, for in the music? Vocal competition. And so I, you went to college for me? music? You went to college for music? Yeah. Uh, San Jose State, I, I, I have a degree in voice and arranging. Cool. And uh, I went there. And um, uh, actually, when I went to San Jose State, I, won, I thought I was going to be, you know, like another George Benson, a good guitar player, you know, major in, you know, guitar and stuff. But I realized that... Uh, um, I'm not that gifted as a guitar player. I'm a better singer. So I studied, you know, I focused on voice and uh, singing more and more jazz. And I actually uh, um, won the Pacific Coast Jazz Festival in the vocal competition when, uh, Boy, that's great. when I was there. That was uh, against all the colleges on the, the West Coast. So that was. Uh, so where are you from, Oakland? I am from Oakland, California. Oakland, what yes. part of Oakland? Far East, East Oakland. Where? I'm from East Oakland. Where? You from East Oakland Seminary. I'm from 51st below San Leandro in the real bad neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, where were you my, from? Uh, yeah, I'm by. You know, I'm closer to Mills College, and and oh, you the were in a, a nice um, neighborhood. <laughs> it definitely has its challenges. It definitely has. Well, its it was nice you know, up there. That's uh, up towards the hills. When they closed hills. a lot. That's up towards the hills, Mills College. Yeah, yeah, it's still, yeah, it's up toward there, but it's still, you know, <laughs> it's, it's we still were in on the, the railroad zone. track down down in, the, down in the ghetto by 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 the chemical plants and stuff. <laughs> my my grandma. Oh was yeah, in, I know where you. Yeah, I know where yeah. you are. Yeah, East yeah, Oakland, fifty yeah. first below San Leandro. You know. Oh yeah. My grandma yeah. lived in, in West Oakland up on, on uh, West Eighth Street. In about the thirties, uh her husband left her after she had like four kids and she married the, the black preacher and they were married till he died forty, fifty years later. And and so they had church at the house, you know, and she played organ and, and he preached at the house. He had been a porter okay. on the Railroad trains before that, you know, he was a retired railroad man. And he yeah. took care of her kids in the Depression. That was like in the 30s. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But he, he was a good man. Well, we never knew him by anything but Papa. But I found out years later his name was Caleb. But, but we knew him <laughs> as Papa. Everyone called him Papa. And she was like about a foot taller than him. She was like 5'8", and he was about 5 foot. So the pictures of him look kind of strange because she's towering over him. But but they were together forever. Oh, that's beautiful. I know my parents were together for 54 years. Wow. Yeah, my mother just turned 92 Monday. Wow. Wow. She's still alive? Yeah, yeah, I'm blessed. Awesome. I'm, I'm blessed. Oh, 
That is surely a blessing. Is your father well, still alive, too? Yeah, who, my mom? Your father. No, 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 you're talking about my dad? No, no, my dad passed away. He, um, um, cancer took him out about, you know, 13 years ago. Oh, oh, my oh. whole family's gone. Yeah. I'm the oldest one in my family now. They all went years ago. Uh, I'm the matriarch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what did your father do? What kind of work did your father do? My father was a longshoreman. Wow. Worked on the ship, yeah, huh? He, he was a longshoreman. Yeah, he worked on the dock. And uh-huh. um, um, this was a great job. You know, like a lot of uh, African Americans at that time, you know, they all wanted to get out the South in the 40s and stuff. It wasn't a really cool place for black folks to be in the South during that time. Yeah, I so know. The opportunity was... You know, the opportunity was out west, go west, go west. And so shipyards were all, uh, you know, where the work was, you know. Yeah, and, shipyards uh, and the trains was the best work yeah. blacks could get. They could get money there, actually, you know. They had to work their yeah. asses off, but they they actually got paid for it. We're in the South, they yeah, didn't get nothing got, but disrespect. Very good money. Very yeah, good that's, money. You know? That's good. So your mother didn't have to work, huh? Uh, yeah, my mother worked. My mother worked for 34 years. At Montgomery Wards. That was on twenty oh. ninth. Used to be on twenty ninth Avenue. There all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that one in Oakland, that great big one. <laughs> yep. We went there all the time. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. They're in the she Salvation was... Army. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation Army. Yeah. Um, she was there for thirty four years. So, Larry, talk to me a little bit about performing. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, how do um, when you, whenever you you finish a performance, um, how how do you um, how does the audience usually react? What do you what kind of response do you get from the audience at the end of each performance? I wanted to ask you. Um, I would say ninety five percent of the time is is really mm-hmm. positive and good, and it you know makes yeah. me want to do more of it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, they love Larry. He's just being <laughs> modest. They love him wherever he plays. They just love him. And I, everyone I loves to, to go up and sing with him. He sings his song about don't go <laughs> following rainbows or chasing what? Chasing it's an old what TLC it, song called Waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I keep thinking it's rainbows. Yeah, it's, a, it's you know, it's one of those pop girl songs. They won a Grammy on it, and it's funny, you know, uh, I, when my daughter was in seventh grade, you know, I went to her class to sing, you know, for the class and stuff. And I'm like, what am I going to sing for seventh graders? And at that time, that was the hit. Oh, that was the that's hit. amazing. So, so I learned that song, and um, I've been doing it ever since. I actually, before I do that song, I tell everybody, this is this next song is a public service announcement. And so it's Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. Please mm-hmm. stick to the rivers and lakes that you're, lakes used, you're to. used to. Yeah. And then everybody comes up and sings along with them, and it, it's mm-hmm. it, it's great. It, it's great when he's in the room. It, it's 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 a whole lot of fun. He's like sunshine. I hear you're yeah. in love again. <laughs> I am that? in love. I met a wonderful woman from Australia. Uh, she's she's from Queensland, and. Uh, it's just all beautiful. It's funny, you know, I, I host the open mic um, the last Wednesdays of the month at this place called The Fireside in Alameda. And uh, it was July 24th. She walked in, and I saw her. And, and, you know, as a good host, I said, hey, you know, this is a place where you can express your individuality and personal freedom. Just sign up on this list. You can get up on stage. And uh, she was like, well, I signed on the list. That's my name right there. I was like, oh, okay. And. I was like, well, you sing? She says, yeah, I sing. Then a guy walked in with keyboards, and she said, can I play his piano? I said, oh, you play too? And uh, she said, yeah, I'll play one of my originals. I said, you write too? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a, uh, it, it all worked out. So it turns out that, uh, you know, as well as a musician, she's also a writer. She wrote a book. Uh, check it out, Escape from Ecclesia. Um, and she does portraits. She did a, a beautiful portrait of my dad. So you go to my Facebook mm-hmm. page. Yeah, I've seen it. Pretty, very nice, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, what was the book her. about? So, what was the book about? It's the book. The book. What was it about? It's a spiritual book. Her her book is it, it's a spiritual book. It's about a, 
the human evolution. human evolution journey of a uh enlightenment. an enlightenment, you know. Uh as a matter of fact it's it's somebody needs to grab it and do a movie. <laughs> yeah. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. What's the name Absolutely. of the book? Escape to Ecclesia. Escape oh, to Ecclesia. We should Escape. get her on here and, and uh, interview her one of these days. You well, you know, you that? can say hi to Lisa. She's sitting next to me now. Say hi, well, Why don't you let us talk to her for a second? Hi, go, George. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? How long have you been here from Australia? I'm doing well. Um, six and a half weeks this time. Six and a half weeks. So you go back and forth? Yeah, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like it here? Um, well, I have some pretty special friends that make it extra nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying all the music that I do with Larry and... um and the opposite, because where we are is a very arts-based kind of community, so I really enjoy that aspect of it. What's your book about? Tell us about your book. Yes. Um, it's a spiritual, spiritually-based fantasy. So um, it's really, a, it sort of starts with the protagonist, you know, the girl, she's only 16, and she becomes sort of like a spearhead for a spiritual movement to take people into kind of more enlightened states, but it crosses over with reality and past historical points and, and people that you would know and situations and things like that. So, yeah, there's some sequels coming, but I, I want to sort of put a bit more energy into this one first. Great. We could make a movie out of that, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got music written into it, too. Like, I, I really and put it into the film. Well, that's great. And, and so you met Larry here, huh? How are you and Larry getting along? Uh, better all the time. It's, and it started out pretty darn good. <laughs> oh, I love Larry. Larry's a really, really good person. Oh. He is. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think she's better than what I deserve, girl, George. <laughs> no, no, nobody's better than you, you what you deserve. You you deserve the best, Larry. You're great. You're a great yeah. person. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did have a couple So, so uh, Larry, is Larry still there? Larry, are you I'm here, yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Larry, what about that thing you you, you said you were going to do for a charity, uh, for for yes. people that are uh, musicians that are old and can't work? You were going to do some kind of open mic thing for them? Tell me about yeah, that. Well, you know, you know, by me being a, you know, a working musician, you know, a, a lot of my peers, you know, when they when they do when they can no longer work when they get sick or you know ill, you know, they have no income. So, you know, over the years we've been, you know, we as a community we've come together and and just um, you know support one another, do whatever we need to do. But I would like to, uh, you know, like with some of the open mics that I host, I would I would like to create an ongoing thing where. Where you know I only do it once a month. Where you know we're involving a, a, a local charity, or or if there's one of our uh, fellow musicians who's in need, you know we can identify that and address that. Because we, one thing we do here in the Bay Area, you know we do the arts. You know we have music going on all the time, all over the place, and um, and and you know we support each other. And it doesn't, you know, no. Body can do everything, but we can all do a little bit. And you know, that's all. You know, I just want to give people an op, create a, a venue, and you know, give all the people an opportunity to do their part. You know, that's hmm. great. That's really good. That's always a good thing. It's um, because arts right now are, are starting to become a really big movement, especially down here in where I'm at. And um, I'm since, uh, we did uh, an interview with uh, uh, Yuri Cole last week, and uh, he he also mentioned the same thing: how big uh, the arts movement is getting in that particular area of. He's in uh, L.A. He's in Hollywood. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, just all together in the areas that I, that we've interviewed so far, I mean, the arts are just, they're just everywhere, and that's an awesome um, and amazing experience to come across, that there are people that care so much about it. And uh, so far, 
um, th- these last two guests, uh, like Larry and, and Yuri, they have brought that out, and I'm very pleased with that. It's because here in in my town, especially, it's getting to be a, an even bigger, uh, bigger movement here as well. So that makes me a happy camper. <laughs> well, I'm anyway. so glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I spent time in uh, of San Antonio. I was in the Air Force. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful town. Beautiful. Town. It's a gorgeous yeah. town. Oh my goodness, and it's paintable too, especially at night when when the city lights dance. Oh my God, San Antonio has a right to be proud. <laughs> oh man, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So now that you, now that you brought it up, what did uh, so you, you were you stationed here in San Antonio, Larry? I'm was I what? Were you stationed here in San Antonio? Um, well, everybody in the Air Force, if you join the Air Force, you go through San Antonio. That's where basic <laughs> training is. Ah. You remember the Alamo. Um, yes. <laughs> now, after after I got out of basic training, I stayed in Texas. I went to Wichita Falls, mm-hmm. met some of the nicest people I ever met in my life, but I was in mm-hmm. Tornado Alley. Oh, yes. In, uh, we have that, too. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it kind of chased me back to California. I mean, you know, that the time of months I was there, you know, I just knew the state bird was the buffalo gnat and mosquito. And, uh, <laughs> awesome. Oh, so what's next for you? What do you what do you see for yourself coming? Um to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. You going to go to Australia? Uh, Australia, yeah, Lisa's from Australia. I have to Are go you going to go there? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to get there in June or July. Oh, that's far out. That would be fun. Have yeah. you been there before? No, I haven't. It's a long way away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, so she's, uh, she just says there's a lot of places to play music and um mm-hmm. And you, I, I've met a lot of her friends and family and stuff, and I'm I'm just, man, I feel like a kid in a candy store. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. so all, the, all over again. It's great being in love, isn't it? I have been in love for years, but I remember once upon a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, where, it's, 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 where can we, it's my time. Yes. Where can we find your music? Where can we find your performances? I have a music page on Facebook, Larry Noble Senior Music. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And um Yeah, yeah, you know, that's my uh that's my page and, and you know, I, I post everything on there, you know. Oh wonderful. And he's up on the- YouTube too. A lot yeah. of his stuff is under the Black Pearl Project. That was his old band. So a lot of the yeah, videos yeah, are stuff on there. Uh my new band which is mm-hmm. well, my, my my new band is called Free Thinkers. That's P H R E E. P H R E E. Free Thinkers. Oh, I love that. P H R E E. Great name. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Free Thinkers. Yes. So is yeah. your girlfriend in that band? Huh? Is your girlfriend in that band? Um, I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, the nucleus of it um. It's basically me, my 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 kunga player, um, and uh, and my bass player. That's that's the nucleus. But we, you know, um, we're free and and we do a variety of stuff. So you know, if I get certain gigs, you know, whatever the client needs, you know, I can have a two piece and bring it up to the, a fifteen piece if need be. Where is your open so, mic that you do every week? Um, I do once a month. At the High Street Station on the uh, first Thursdays of the month. In Alameda. In Alameda. On the last Wednesday of the month in Alameda, I host at the Fireside. What and, street is um, that on? On the, um, that's on Webster Street in Alameda. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And occasionally and then, you drop and then, by uh, the Missouri and, then, and, then and play. The, <laughs> yeah, and then on the third Wednesdays uh, of the month, I lead the house band out at a restaurant, Italian restaurant called Forley's in Alamo. Oh, that's out in the valley, huh? Yeah, yeah, I get to rub, rub, rub elbows with the uh, rich and infamous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to talk to uh, talk about your son? My son, 
The one um, that got uh, shot? Okay, I can talk about that. Um, okay. Back in, what um, happened? Uh, back in 05, um, my boys were actually on the way to a peace rally going to mm-hmm. San Quentin Penitentiary. That was The next week they were going to execute Tukey Williams. While my sons were driving over there, they drove through Richmond, and they got caught up in a drive-by. My son, Elliot, who had just turned 20, um, he uh, um, took, you know, he, 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 he died instantly. And my oldest son, who was with him, he took two bullets in the head. One, one went through his jaw, the other went through his eye. And my son is here today. He has, I have three grandsons, and uh, he's, you know, he's, he's doing fine. He's coming back stronger. Um, if you get a chance, George, I did send you an MP3 of a song called um, Wise First Choices. The, uh, a month before I lost my son, he had uh, put a quote. He wrote a quote down that he saw, and he put it on the uh, refrigerator, and it said, In life, make wise first choices because there are very few second chances. And so I, I took that quote and I wrote a song. And um, so, you know, if you get a chance, uh, get a well, chance I'll to hear I'll put that them. at the end of this video here. If you sent me MP3, that's when I'll put up. Mm-hmm. So that will yes, go along with the video of this interview here. Because I remember mm-hmm. the night it happened or right after it happened, you came into the Starry Plow and you were just crushed. And, and I drug you up on stage and got everybody to sing along with you to oh. to that, that, that rainbow or don't go chasing Waterfalls, waterfalls. Yeah, waterfall. And we all sang together, and it, it was it was and like. I, and I must say that during that time when I lost my son, um, the uh, the art community, uh, girl George, and, and and the people at, uh, um, you know, the various places where we would uh, Starry Plow and mm-hmm. uh, my buddy Paul Potts, and just you know, just just the support and love that I got from all you guys. That is amazing. That truly is amazing. So music is my therapy. Um, That's awesome. It's where um, I make my uh, personal cry public. And, uh, you know, I try to come from the heart. You know, what comes from the heart goes to the heart. And so uh, that's what I try to do. Well, you do a great job of it. Well, you're real religious, aren't you? Religious? No. No, I'm a spiritual being. I'm I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Oh, I thought you're part of a church or something. No. (laughs) I'm part of the same church you are. Life. Oh, (laughs) rock and roll. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, music is my church. And yeah. you people are all my my fellow uh, parishioners or whatever they call them. <laughs> yeah, denominations. You know, that's that denomination is to divide, and and mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not smart enough to put God in a box or mm-hmm. whoever you want to call it. You know, I I I, I one thing I can say I can, I can quote this scripture in the Bible. Uh, Paul said, uh, "We know in part, we prophesy in part." I just thank God for the part you have. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, that is yes, an, awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, whatever <laughs> brings people together and yeah. make a joyful noise unto the Lord, you know, that's, that's my thing. Get yeah, everyone to sing along and together. And that's what the music does. You mm-hmm. know, I, I don't believe in censoring music. I, I You know, I believe in people expressing what they feel. True. And just. just just bring it out there. I'd rather for you to express it musically than to express it physically and violently, you know? Right. Yes, exactly. You know? Amen to that. <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So, um, be sh- so the show is just about almost over, so I'm just going to say this. Oh, my goodness. It was a great afternoon to have you, Larry, and I'm going to make uh, sure that people get yes. Yes, absolutely. It was amazing. Girl, George, you're also a blast. Please, people, be sure to look up Free Thinkers on YouTube, and also, what is the other project called? Uh, well, 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 well. You what? What you want to look up is is uh, Larry Noble 
Senior Music. Yes, Larry Facebook. Noble Senior Music. Yeah, okay. Well, just look up Larry Noble Senior Music on Facebook, and you can also look up his projects on YouTube as well. So uh, you look up the, the Free Thinkers. That's spelled P-H-R-E-E yes. Thinkers. So look them yeah. up on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. And you'll, you can yeah, also find Lisa. Yes. Absolutely. You can yes. Great my name talking in. to you, Larry. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a great day, yes. ladies. Definitely. Stay safe, so, strong, girl, and healthy. Yes. Thank you so much. Girl George, you are always an amazing spirit, and you always bring a joy to GPR. You are a blast. You should know that, <laughs> as you always do. So this is the Gypsy Poet signing off saying adio for now. See yeah.